Hello everyone, welcome to week five. Um, I started with chapter eight and I actually have a lot to say this time. Um, I started with disaster myths. Uh, some disaster myths do have some truth to them, but people believe they are true for all victims of disasters. A common theme of disaster myths is that people are mentally weak and are not able to take care of themselves or others. Another common theme is that some people will prey on others to gain any advantage, and this would be like looting or robbing people. Um, media, movies, and novels have helped strengthen these myths, these myths even though um, we have proven through a lot of research uh, that they are not true. Uh, most of disaster victims um, have been found to be quite resilient and try to manage the situation instead of succumbing to it. Uh, many scientific studies have shown that many victims do not panic, but actually eva evacuate, uh, evaluate their situation and try to help themselves and others. Um, there are some psychological consequences uh, for disaster victims. Some are good in that victims uh, become more prepared for disasters in the future, so they know what to expect um, and what to do. Others are bad in that they may cause sleeplessness, anxiety, or uh, irritability, and there's several other things. Um, but these don't usually stay, it's just usually like right after the disaster. Um, and then some victims do suffer from immobilizing shock after a, a disaster, but uh, the book said it was an extremely small percentage of victims. Um, most victims continue to act responsibly and listen to the instructions from emergency response officials. Next is uh, personal risk assessment and response. Um, people know is when people know a disaster is, is coming, they look to the media and the authorities as what to do um, when it, uh, when to evacuate. Um, but they also look at what other people are doing around them. And I thought this was interesting because I actually never thought about this. And for example, if you see your neighbor packing up their car and leaving with their whole family, you would probably be more likely to leave. And I know that is true for me. And that made me think of in Independence Day when um, they go outside and the, <laughs> the big ship is in the air and everyone is like packing their cars and they're, they're getting out. They're not going to stay. Um, and then people also consult their family members as what they should do. And then um, a, th a very important thing I thought um, about when, for when we, I read this was uh, volunteers during and after disaster um, need to be grouped together by the skills they have. This makes it easier um, to assign each volunteer to a task they can handle, making sure there are no accidents um, due to a volunteer uh, la due to a volunteer lacking certain knowledge and I thought that was important because I actually never really thought about that um, that people might you know want to actually help but if they don't know what to do in that situation then maybe they're not really helping um, then there was the article why den officials or the the evacuation of Houston and that was during um, Hurricane Harvey um, and Houston officials thought it was best for people to stay put because they didn't believe the entire area, area could be evacuated in time. They also were also under the assumption that they were just getting some rain. Um, the mayor of Houston believed an evacuation would be a nightmare because um, in his thoughts, um, sorry, I keep rolling my eyes, because uh, in his thoughts, uh, 6.5 million people would be on the road. And I don't think so, but um, my money point is for this article, if all of these people cannot be evacuated, then why hasn't Houston thought up another plan? Couldn't they at least set up shelters um, everywhere on high ground where anyone in the affected area can go to find safety? Also, if the poor, elderly, and disabled are much less likely to have a way out of the area, then why are they not brainstorming as what to do to help these minorities? Um, and then 
The other article was wildfires in Southern California. And the one guy talked about how he was at his daughter's recital and, you know, saw that the fires were there, but then just went home with his kid and went to bed. So I said, it scares me to think that some people knew the fires were coming and thought the firemen would uh, just put out the fire before it got to them. Um, but then when they woke up, the fires were almost to their houses. So I think people need to take um, natural disasters more seriously and follow the instructions of authorities to leave the area, even if it's inconvenient. Because in the long run, even if it didn't happen, at least you know you did something to help your child or yourself. Um, uh, if you have children, I feel it's best to be overprotective and leave the area, even if the fires end up not going near your home. And then um, I wanted to talk about animals stranded by Hurricane Florence because I thought this was really great. Um, I love seeing all the people rescuing animals and hearing that a man used the school bus to save over 60 shelter dogs and cats. And it just shows that some of us um, can actually care about animals that are our own because most of the time we're more worried about our own pets. Um, but these are these animals didn't have an owner, but this man um, wanted to save them, and I thought that was great. Um, but then to see that someone left their dogs locked up in an outdoor cage really boils my blood. Um, I just can't believe someone would do that. You couldn't, ha and I said you couldn't have at least let them out so they could run away. Um, animals are pretty resilient. They, they're a lot smarter than we think they are. So their instinct would be to run and try to get to safety. So why wouldn't you at least give them that option? Um, and then I said, human life is important, but when you adopt an animal, they become part of your family. That means you do everything you can to help your whole family. Um, if you if people don't see their pets as part of their family, I don't understand why they have them in the first place. So that's just my opinion. But then my discussion question for this week is, um, what evacuation plan do you have at your home? For example, where would you go if you had to evacuate? Um, or what would you do if you weren't able to evacuate? And I think it would be interesting to see what people would say if they weren't able to evacuate, what they would do. Um, and also, um, think of what you would do if you had pets, because let's not forget, they're also part of your family. Okay, thank you, and I will see you next week.